We're back with a Fox News alert. A new ISIS ringleader reportedly emerges hours after President Trump announces the death of terror mastermind al-Baghdadi. Newsweek reports that a former Iraqi military officer has taken control of ISIS. Baghdadi is said to have nominated his successor in August. This as a Kurdish militia leader says the terror group's top spokesperson was killed Sunday in a separate attack. U.S. forces worked with the Kurds to carry out the mission. American officials have not confirmed the death. U.S. defense officials are warning about the possibility of retaliation for Baghdadi's death in the United States. Law enforcement agencies on high alert, warning that ISIS supporters may try to avenge Baghdadi's death through acts of violence. All right, on the same topic, much of the mainstream media appeared unimpressed as the president announced the death of ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. President Trump has repeatedly celebrated what he calls the defeat of ISIS, but, you know, he hasn't talked much personally about al-Baghdadi by name. It's also the kind of thing that Americans expect presidents to accomplish. Here to debate if uh, the media's take on President Trump's successfully ordered special operations mission is justified. Turning Point USA spokesperson Rob Smith and Democratic strategist Sasha Burns. Guys, thanks for coming on this morning. Rob, hey, obviously Rob. A, a major moment for the president yes. and the administration, uh, and it's great news for them. What did you make of the media's response? Well, I thought the media's response was typically negative. Uh, the best thing, the only thing that the mainstream media can do when it comes to covering this president is either, either ignoring when things go well as an unemployment, as in the First Step Act, as in a lot of different things, um, and downplaying when they do go well. So there is something about the death of this terrorist that should not be a partisan thing. We should all be very happy as Americans yeah. um, that in an ISIS uh, leading terrorist that was a genocidal uh, murdering maniac is dead. Right. This should be a good thing. This is not something that should be litigated in the media right now. And we have people trying to spin this negatively. And I think that this is why people do not trust the media anymore. It is very Sasha. obvious to anybody that's seeing that this is being spun. Sure. Sasha, the media, you know, has a hard time celebrating a, a win for the president. You agree with that? Um, Rob, if I could say first, I just want to say thank you to the um, the special forces who carried this out with such skill and bravery. Um, they keep us safe every day and we are grateful. Um, in terms of the criticism of the president, there, there are two sides of it. One is just sort of the Trump show that uh, he put on yesterday that the media can't help but react to. But uh, more importantly, it's the criticism comes from the fact that this operation was successful for the very things that Trump either doesn't support or disparages. And that's that we had the forces on the ground and our intelligence. We had the support of the Kurds, who we've just abandoned. And we had the um, the ability to be there. So our pulling out of Syria which has been condemned by national security experts, by officials on both sides. Uh, that doesn't go away. ISIS is not gone. This is a great day for victory, mm -hmm. or a great victory for the U.S. and for the world. But ISIS isn't gone, and we need to remain vigilant. Okay, let's move on here and talk about how the Washington Post uh, covered this story. They had an obituary of which they had to change the headline for three times. We're going to take a look at the first headline from the WAPO. Uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, Islamic State's terrorist in chief, dies at 48. That one seems fairly appropriate. They update that to say austere religious scholar at helm of Islamic State. And a lot of people, especially on Twitter, just went nuts wondering why that was a changed headline. And then they changed it kind of back. And they went back to extremist leader of Islamic State dies at 48 years old. Uh, it's almost like, Rob, they're, they're trying to pander to anybody that might be offended by the death of this man. I mean, at this point, when you look at the headline, I, I think the Washington Post thought that they were being too nice to the murderous, uh, genocidal, rapist terrorist. Um, and that's what you see when, <laughs> when they did the, uh, the change to that headline. But I, I think that you'll look at this a lot with the mainstream media. When you look back a couple months back when the New York Times changed their headline, um, when the president did a, uh, a speech, uh, Trump urges racist, uh, unity versus racism, and then they changed it to something else because the woke Twitter left was upset at that uh -huh. headline. So what you see with the mainstream media right now is that they are completely beholden to the far woke yeah. left on Twitter, and I don't think it's a good thing for our media. Sasha, austere religious scholar for al-Baghdadi, what do you make of that? 
You know, Rob, I heard that uh, Adolf Hitler, aspiring artist and longtime boyfriend of Ava Braun, died uh, <laughs> right. by suicide, well, too. I'm going to leave the I Hitler mean, jokes I, to you. So. I, 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 yeah, there you go. I, I don't know. I mean, the first headline works. The third headline works. What happened in the middle? Maybe they got hacked. So maybe Adam Schiff wrote it. I have no idea what wow, they were thinking. Wow, must be the, must be the same it. person That's that had Joy Reid. Hey, Reed. Oh, we, hey we're all getting along here. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Sasha. It's good to have a debate where Thank at least you. one thing we agree on anyway. And Rob Smith, it. thank you so much. Great name. Thank All you. Right. <laughs>